There is a very provocative must-read essay posted right now at Smirconish.com under the headline, The Fraud in Analyzing Voter Fraud. And it begins this way. I have held my tongue too long. I didn't want to feed the Trump narrative of massive fraud and a stolen election, so I waited for the Electoral College to return its votes for then-President-elect Biden. Then I waited until the swearing-in, just to be sure. But now that the Georgia legislature has passed controversial voter security legislation, I can no longer hold back. So here I go. Trump may not have been able to prove election fraud massive enough to overturn the election, but just because he can't prove it didn't mean it didn't happen. The author of this piece then goes on to describe his 35 years of working to elect Democratic candidates at the federal, state, and local levels and adds this tidbit of biographical information. For full disclosure, I was also indicted, convicted, sentenced and served 10 months of an 18 month sentence in federal prison for violations of the Federal Election Campaign Act. The author joins me now. It's Ken Smuckler, a friend of mine. Hey, Ken, thank you so much for writing this piece for Smirconish.com. So you've been thinking this for a while, but you didn't want to say it until now. Right, I mean, it's because it's not a definitive narrative Um, that explains massive voter fraud. It is a narrative that explains how voter fraud might have occurred and nobody would ever know it because the system in unwittingly was set up to, uh, to avoid detection. How could it have happened? Well, I, you know, it's like, I kind of speculate because I don't really know very much about the U.S. Postal Service. And, you know, I mean, the last time I I probably interacted with the Postal Service this way was when I was a kid in grade school and wanted to steal a report card from my own mailbox. You wanted wanted to change a a B minus to a B plus? Is that what you're saying? (laughs) That would not have been worth the steal. (laughs) (laughs) But but I do believe... I, I, I do believe that when you have human interaction with ballots, the more human interaction there is with ballots, the weaker the security is with the system. And vote by mail is inherently a weak system because you have postal service hands touching ballots between the voter and the execution of the vote. And anytime you have hands touching, touching a ballot, there is a weak point. And, and, and let me say this, it's, it's not, this is not necessarily Republican or Democrat, but it, we happen to be, I happen to be talking to you out of Philadelphia, in Philadelphia. And in Philadelphia, every year, there are challenges to signatures on ballots, um, on petitions. Um, so it's not as though we, we live in a world where someone couldn't dummy up a signature. Um, it is a little more complicated if you're saying this is a, a massive conspiracy to um, violate election law through the postal service. But my point is there are weaknesses in vote by mail And what I couldn't stand on the sideline anymore and listen to are people that particularly secretaries of state, election board commissioners, saying there was absolutely no voter fraud. Asking an election commissioner whether there was voter fraud in their district is like asking the lawyer for a hospital whether there's malpractice in the hospital. There's a, there's a, it would be a statement against personal interest, yet nobody seems to be saying, hey, wait a second, there's no independent verification of fraud or, or they're asking the very people who you would expect to say there was no fraud to say there just was because, no fraud. Just because you can't prove it occurred doesn't mean it didn't occur is really where you're coming at this. Correct. And and all I do is kind of lay out, well, how could it possibly happen? Well, if if postal service workers are theoretically bribable and and 
this kind of direct mail is theoretically designable and printable. And there are smart political operatives who can theoretically target voters for switching then it's all possible to be to happen. And the fact that it didn't happen is not proof. It is supposition. And I just want to make that clear. You were worried about saying this at any point before now because you thought that President Trump or supporters of former President Trump could seize on it and say, hey, here's a guy totally wired in Philadelphia, 35 plus years working to elect Democrats locally, statewide, nationally, actually went away for a while himself for violation of the Federal Election Commission Act. And he is saying it's possible it occurred. You worried that would have been manipulated. Well, and, and because it was all moving through the court system, and I have a kind of a visceral reaction to the federal court system these days, um, I didn't want to get dragged. I didn't want myself to be dragged into it and to be used as part of litigation to overturn the election. Because I am not saying this did happen. I am saying don't put it as fact that it did not happen. And you've obviously using the experience that you have, the legitimate experience that you have knowing the system, you've worked through in your mind. It's, it's almost like someone who goes to a, a, a gallery and for shits and giggles wonders, how would I pull off a caper here if I were so inclined? You've looked at the system and you've said, here's the vulnerability. Explain it to me one more time. What's the, what's the vulnerability you see in a vote by mail system such as ours? So this is kind of how I would play it out. Right. You know, Philadelphia battleground area, battleground state. Trump needed more votes out of Philadelphia. He actually got more votes than he got in 2016, but he didn't get enough, right? You go into Northeast Philadelphia where there are Republican strongholds, right? And you then start flipping Republican, if you're a, if this is a Biden conspiracy, right? If Trump is actually right and there's a Biden conspiracy, you go into our pockets of a debate of a Democratic base area, and you start targeting votes that you are you know are coming in that are going to be coming in Republican, but you're in a Democratic base area. And then you just, what do you do? You bribe the postal service either at the guy who's the carrier, but my guess is it's somebody in the 30th street where the main postal service is, where all the mail's coming from. And they just start picking off these particular ballots that are coming in. They take them to a, to a, a off site. They, they have already printed up, they know who they're targeting. They've already printed up their ballots their outer envelopes, anything. They have the signatures, right? Because they're they're violating the law. They're stealing mail, opening it up. They have the signatures. They copy the signature of the voter onto it. So it's going to match the poll book. And then they just walk it over to the county commissioner's office through the postal service. The county commissioner doesn't know. The voter won't know he was he or she was defrauded because we don't count votes directly back to the voter. And all that would happen is Trump would would essentially there would be an anomaly uh, among a Republican vote area where you would think Trump was do doing better, but in fact, Trump is doing worse. And, and by, all people would say at that point was it's Trump's fault. Right. And by and the that's way, how you it. and by the way, Ken, if I'm one of those voters, I, I, I get the plan. I'm a Republican voter in a Democratic area. So in this area, you are, you're replacing, you're swapping out my legitimate ballot. I would never right. know. I would never know because I might not even know that that's not my signature if you've done a decent job in copying it. And at a certain point in the tabulation process, the signature on the envelope becomes separated from the ballot inside. So there'd be no way to ever know. Right. And that's and, 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 and that's the point, Michael, is nobody ever we if you were in this operation, by the way, you wouldn't change any of the down ballot candidates. Right. They'd all go Republican. You're only flipping Trump. Right. So it's still going to look in that area like like Rep the Republicans were performing like Republicans in that area. It's just this little anomaly well, that Trump underperformed in that particular area. Right. And, you, look, and you were, if you were, if you were trying to do it against Trump, 
you would just say, well, the polling data hadn't been accurate, or these people were offended by something he said, or he did, or for whatever. There'd be a million different reasons to explain away the anomaly. Of course there would be, right? And since, and since we don't track votes to individual voters, right? You would never know. The voter never know that the voter never goes back right. and says, right. "Oh, I want to make sure you you that I cast my vote for Trump and it didn't go for Trump." I'll give you an example. This goes back a ways. But remember when Buchanan and the butterfly ballots in Palm sure. Beach, yes. right? Yes. Right. Now everybody knew that was a ballot problem, right? Except the Buchanan people were saying that Jewish voters in Palm Beach overperformed for Buchanan <laughs> because he because of his stance on Israel. Right. 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 It's like you there's can always an explanation. Anything. Right. You, you can make up anything. It's like it's it's like what Newman said in Seinfeld, right? You control the post office, you control information. All right. All right. All right, you go ahead. You go ahead, you keep it secret. But you remember this. When you control the mail, you control information. <laughs> and that's what's going on here. Uh, one last thing. In, in your bio attached to your great Smirconish.com essay, you're identified as the author of the forthcoming book, The Jailbird Diet, losing 100 pounds and finding myself in federal prison. You might not know or remember, but I said to you, when you regaled me with stories while you were at your federally gated community, I said to you, you're gonna write a book, right? And you said to me, nah, every prison book has already been written, but obviously you've got a different idea now. You're gonna explain how you dropped 100 pounds. Right. It's interesting. There have been a lot of books about prison life and a lot of books about prison food. There are very few books about prison diets. <laughs> so I thought there was an opportunity there. Um, and so it, it allowed me to write a lot of the stories that I did regale you with when you came to visit. But, um, but it does have kind of a practical step-by-step um, -step way in which I was able to drop 100 pounds. Right. Well, the key is, how do you drop the 100 pounds without going to prison? <laughs> I'm not so sure you can do it, as I have gained some of it back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I shouldn't be laughing, but I love it. All right. The Fraud no. in Analyzing Voter Fraud. Fabulous essay at Smirconish.com. Ken, thank you for taking the time to write it. I really appreciate it. By the way, I'm sure, I'm just going to say one other thing. I'm sure that this interview will be misconstrued. You know that's going to be the case, that somebody is going to hear something or take out of context something and say, well, here's the guy who explained how they pulled off that caper in Philadelphia. Yeah, and and I fully look. If it happens, it happens, and I will be as straight up with whoever asked me as I think I've been with you. That I, I'm not saying that it did happen. I'm right. saying it could have happened, and we've got to stop accepting it as a fact that it didn't happen. And instead, instead, just call it what it is: supposition. And by the way, moving forward, let's fix it so it no longer is supposition. Let's, Amen. let's put together a system that matches in-person voting and the security of in-person voting. I get it. This was an academic exercise that you've just put us through. Right. Kenny, thank you. That was excellent. Really well done. My pleasure, Michael. Thank you. Appreciate you.